Okay, question 62, it says write down the range of f and the range of g, right? So you can see here the function is defined in terms of domains. So let's sort out f to start with. Let's put that domain in there. So minus infinity, okay? Um, put that in. Um, so put minus infinity in there, and you get minus infinity squared minus 19, okay? Um, and of course, infinity minus infinity squared is infinity so that and take away 19 doesn't make any difference that goes to infinity and then minus 19 sorry zero okay then the domain there um put zero in to so be zero squared minus 19 which is actually equal to minus 19 okay so if you think about it though that graph there then we know what that graph looks like x squared minus 19 it's like that isn't it in that domain area there between minus infinity and zero which is minus 19 there okay so you can see the range taking place there range then is going to be minus 19 infinity okay um, with G um, this one here so put 6 in 1 take away half of 6 which equals to minus 2 okay you use your calculator there and put in infinity um, 1 take away half of um, infinity which actually will go to taking away infinity minus infinity so the range there will be um, minus infinity the lowest value in and then minus two then is the highest value okay so there's part a answered part b then write down the domain and range of f g okay now what i like to do okay here i kind of try and work uh, often work backwards with this okay if they ask for the domain and range of f g I, I tend to sort of work out f g to start with right so i'm actually can you see i'm actually going to I'm actually going to answer part C to begin with because it says here write down an expression for FG. But I like to do this first in order to sort this out. Okay, I find it easier. So let's do uh, let's just do an expression for FG. Okay, now when you do FG, right, the key to this, right, is when you write that down, you can see that's what they've, they've written it down like that. So it's FG of X, isn't it? And what you're actually doing is you're putting G of X into F. So um, this here you put into F, okay? Um, so what I t tend to do, think of as well, is, is, is work sort of this way, from right to left, okay? So this is what you start with. You start with G of X and you're putting it into F. Some people like to put a big bracket around here as well to show, look, G of X is going into F, okay? So this actually then will become F of G of X, and G of X is this. That was the, how it was defined, wasn't it? Okay, so you... So, as I say, working from right to left, you put in G of X into F. So G of X is this, you're going to put it into F, okay? So into F then, your X values in um, F, be okay, here becomes 1 minus half X. So you put that in there, all squared minus 19, okay? So that's what we get, and I'm going to leave it like that, okay, for a minute. There's nothing wrong with the way that's, that's written there. Um, we might need to do some more work on it later, but that that's fine as it is. Um, so we've got that there. Now we want to now actually answer this question here, part B, which said write down the domain and range, okay, of F G. Now if you think about it, straight away I can find the domain of F G, okay. The domain of F G is simple because the domain of F G is simply the domain of G, okay. Always will be the domain of this is always the domain of this right-hand function here. Because remember, it's G that goes into F. You start off with G. So you start off with G, so you've got to take the domain of G, which will be this here, so 6 infinity. Okay? Now, to get the range, to get the range of FG, what you're better off doing is putting the domain into this function FG. That's why I did FG of X first, right? That's why I've answered part C here first. It's better to work out fg of x as a function so you can chuck the domain into it so you can work out what the range is so if we put the domain in here six in here okay we'll go to one take away half of six which is three squared minus 19 so if we work that out um that will be um minus 15 okay Just check your calculator on that um and you get minus 15 so we put infinity in there so you have 1 minus half infinity, all squared, take away 19. Now that doesn't matter, right? You're going to, essentially you're squaring infinity here, so it's going to be infinity. Okay, so your range is going to be minus 15 infinity. 
okay? And your domain, as we established, was six infinity. Okay, the domain is the is the same as the domain of g, and then to get the range, you've got to put the domain of g into the function f g of x, okay? And then you sort it. So then it says then part one of c, right? It says part one of c. Write down um, an expression for f g of x. Well, we've already done that, haven't we? Okay. We've already done that. So I'm going to write that down in an expression. You can leave it like that. There's no need to expand anything, right? That's good enough, right? You've done that. Um, so we, we established that before. And then it says, hence solve the equation f g of x equals this. So basically now we've got to put this when it's equal to this line here, 2x minus 26. So this is like some of these equations to see where they intersect, so to speak, where the function f g of x intersects with this line here. So basically, I'm going to use some algebra and put this then equals to this, okay? And um, now I've got to do a bit of work here, okay? Um, I might end up expanding this. I think that perhaps would be the best approach. So if we expand this here um, using FOIL, so, you know, write it out twice if you want. So do file here, you have 1 minus a half x minus a half x, so that'll be minus x. And then times the last here, so that'll be plus a quarter x squared. Um, minus 19 equals 2x minus 26. Okay. Now, um, what I might do now is get everything onto this side, the left-hand side. So I've got 1 quarter x squared minus x here. And this 2x, bring it over so I have minus 3x. Okay. And I've got 1 minus 19, which is minus 18. And then take this minus 26 over, so it becomes a plus 26. So I'll become plus 8 equals 0. Okay, so I've got a quadratic, right? And with a the quadratic, then I'm going to solve this quadratic. But because it's, you know, a bit nastier, maybe I'll times through by 4. Okay, so I'll have x squared minus 12x times everything through by 4. Times that by 4 plus 32 equals 0. Okay, so this turns out to be a nice quadratic because you have x minus 4 x um, minus 8, yeah, I think that's what it is, those two terms there, yeah, that works out, so then when you solve this, then you say um, x minus 4 equals 0, okay, um, or x minus 8 equals 0, so that means x will equal 4, or x will equal 8, now, please be warned, right, with this, you're not quite finished, right, because you need to ask yourself these answers, are they acceptable, right, do they work for us? And remember, we've been dealing in this part where we put the where we solve the equation f g of x yeah equals two x minus uh, twenty six. So with this right, because it's f g of x, we need to look at what the domain was for f g of x. What values can we include for x? And the domain, if you remember back, was this. Okay, those are the values of x we can include. So this one can't be included, right? So you could say, look, this is outside the domain outside the domain this one is okay though so our answer is inside the domain there so we'd say x is equal to 8 and we're done